Good morning, you all. It's Danielle from Large Family Homestead and Abby. And we are preparing to process that 200 pounds of pears that we got from Azure. So I'm gonna flip you around here and show you what we've done so far. And um, we're gonna break this up into two days just because of canner space and logistics. So let's see what we got going on. So yesterday we went ahead and sorted the pears into different boxes showing what each one was. Like there's gonna be pear pie filling, pear sauce right there. Um, so that's what we did yesterday. We sorted all those out, um, but also left some for kids to eat. So they're not without pears. And we set up our schedule. So here's the plan. Day one to get through the pear pie filling and the sliced pears, those are both gonna be canned. Then we're going to freeze some pears and try something new, baking some in the oven. We don't have a dehydrator yet and we don't have a freeze dryer. I wanna get both. They're on my list of things that we're saving for. Um, and then tomorrow, let me move this, I have my other hand with a baby. <laughs> um, tomorrow we're gonna finish up with the pear sauce and pear jam. And then if there's anything worth juicing, we will also juice it. Maybe it'll add up to some amount and then whatever we don't need, will go to the chickens. So let's get started um, and we'll give you our recipes for everything that we do. The first item that we made was pear pie filling and you'll need about 36 medium sized pears to make seven quarts. The first thing we did was we peeled and sliced the pears. While Bailey continued peeling the pears, I added to our bowl of pear slices four cups of sugar, a half a cup of flour, four teaspoons of cinnamon, and four tablespoons of lemon juice. And as I continued to slice pears, I combined them into this mixture. Once you add all the sliced pears to this mixture, let sit for 30 minutes before cooking. To cook your pear pie filling, just add it to a pot and you're going to bring it to a gentle boil and then simmer for 20 minutes. And then after this is done, you can pack it in quart sized jars, leaving in half an inch of headspace. Don't forget that before you add your two piece canning lids to remove the air bubbles. Then process in a water bath canner for 20 minutes. And remember you don't need a special pot for water bath canning, you can use any regular pot and you just need to put a rack on the bottom. The next project that we started was pears in a honey syrup and we canned this. I'm also going to tell you how to do it in a sugar syrup in case you want to do it that way. So the first thing that we did is we peeled and sliced these pears the same way we did for the pie filling. But instead of adding a pie filling mixture, I have a large bowl about half full with water and I added a half a cup of lemon juice to that. And as you slice your pears, you'll want to add them to this juice so that they don't brown. Once you've sliced your pears, it's time to prepare the syrup. And to make the syrup, you're gonna add six cups of water to a pot and one cup of honey. Now if you wanted to not use honey, you could just replace this with one cup of sugar. You're gonna put this on the stove and bring it to a boil. I used the raw pack method, so I took my sliced pears out of the lemon juice and packed them into jars. And once your syrup is boiling, you're gonna bring that out and cover the pears, leaving half an inch of head space. Then you're going to remove air bubbles, clean the rims, add your two-piece canning lids, 
and process in a water bath canner for 25 minutes, adjusting for altitude. We're gonna show you a few different ways to use the peels and cores from your video, but right now I took some of the cores to make pear vinegar. So you're just gonna add the cores to the container of your choice. Mine is a five gallon bucket. And you're gonna fill this container with your cores and water. And you can add sugar. You don't have to, but you can, up to a cup per gallon. The more you add, the faster the fermentation process will go. After a couple of days, remove the pear cores and then let the vinegar sit undisturbed for at least a month. The longer it ages, the better it will be. While Brooke was handling the canning projects, I got to work on a new project, oven drying some pears. So we don't have a dehydrator, but we thought it might be fun to try this recipe where you can essentially dehydrate the pears in your oven. So we took a cooling rack, put it on a baking sheet, and sliced the pears very thinly and put them on that cooling rack without touching any of the other pears. Then I sprinkle all of the pears with cinnamon and sugar, put them in the oven at 170 degrees. It took us about two hours to dry them out completely and I would flip them over halfway through. Our next step was to freeze some pears. So the first few batches we did in slices. We also later on did some diced pears so that we have a variety in the freezer for different purposes. When we sliced the pears, we put them in a mixture of lemon juice and water to um, help preserve them, keep them from getting brown during the processing. After they had some time to soak, we dried them off well and layered them on a cookie sheet with parchment paper. It's important to flash freeze frozen fruit so that it doesn't stick together later when you need it. Um, so we put it in a single layer. We did a few layers of it. Put it in the freezer for a few hours. Then when that's done, you can take them out and put them in a bag and they won't stick together. During this time, all of our scraps and bad spots were thrown in the crock pot with some water to make juice. The next day, we strained all that out and we were left with about a gallon of juice both days because we did this both days that we processed. We also threw some of the scraps in the juicer to make a more nutrient rich juice that was then used in smoothies. Anything left over from that day went to feed our chickens and they were so happy. We really strive to have zero waste in the house um, and food scraps are just such a blessing to chickens. If you don't have chickens, you could always put them in your compost pile, which then can be used for gardening uh, needs later on. Good morning, y'all. We have survived day one, barely. <laughs> we are getting ready to start day two. What did you think about day one? Exhausting. It was. It was, <laughs> it was more than we thought it was going to be, for sure. Um, but let me turn you around and show you where we're at. So this is what we are down to. Almost there, people. And we decided to do a lot of other things that we didn't plan for. So, oh, we got the pear pie filling done. The sliced pears are done. Freezer pears are done. We just have to bag them all up. I'm going to talk to you about that in a minute. And then we did some juicing. So this morning for breakfast, the juice that I put through our juicer is going into the smoothies. And I have some going in the crock pot as well. Um, that I don't know what we're going to do with yet. We talked about making gummies. And Brooke also decided to... Did you decide to mix that with your apple vinegar? What, the cores that are left over? Mm -hmm. Yes, all the cores that are left over because we can't run them through the juicer are going through, are going into the vinegar. Okay, so she's adding pears to her apple vinegar that she's been making for how long? 
Um, it's a couple weeks in, so it's not like it's not done. Okay. But it's getting there, so I just added the pears to it. Great. And I think my most favorite project actually turned out to be the oven baked pears. It's a lot of work, but they've come out really well. And in all fairness, we probably made double this, but it's been a hit. Mm -hmm. So, um, we're gonna keep working on some more of those today, see if I can maybe get at least half of a jar. It's, just a, it's a lot of work and it ties up the oven for a long time, but they are loved. Um, and we are also gonna finish up the rest of our pears with pear sauce and pear jam. So let's check it out. To kick off the second day of processing, we made pear sauce. And you probably guessed right, pear sauce is just like applesauce made with pears. So you do not have to can this recipe if you don't want to, we did. And to make seven quarts, you'll need 42 pounds of sliced pears. And we did not peel them because we wanted the extra nutrients from the peels, but you can peel them if you want to. To cook this, add all your sliced pears to a pot, put a little bit of water in the bottom so that they don't burn, and cook them till they're completely soft. Then I drained most of the liquid out of the pot. I left a little bit behind. And I used an immersion blender to puree them until they were pretty much like a sauce. If you wanted to, you could add a little bit of sugar to taste before cooking them, but I didn't find that the sugar was necessary. The pears were already sweet enough. Then ladle this into quart jars, leaving a half an inch of head space. Don't forget to remove the air bubbles and clean the rims before adding your lids and processing in a water bath canner for 20 minutes. I wanted to try a new recipe for fruit leather, so I took four apples and four pears, put them in a saucepan with some water, cooked them until they were nice and soft, then I drained out the water, used the immersion blender to get it nice and smooth, and then I took that mixture and spread it out on a cookie sheet, nice and even. It's important to grease the cookie sheet so it doesn't stick. And then I put it in the oven at 170. It took several hours before it was completely dried, but it came out just like a fruit snack and I know it's a healthier option. Make sure it's completely cooled before you try to cut it. Another item that we did was pear jam and I used a no pectin recipe. For seven pints, you will need 16 pounds of pears, peeled and diced. Then add eight cups of sugar and one cup of lemon juice. I also added some fresh ginger, but that was just a personal preference. Then leave this mixture in the fridge overnight, no less than four hours if you're short on time. Once that's done, bring your mixture to a boil. Then lower the heat to medium for 10 to 15 minutes or until it passes the gel test. I also mashed my pears a little because I felt that the chunks were a little bit too big. Then you're gonna pack into your pint jars, leaving a quarter inch of headspace, and process in a canner for 15 minutes. If you want to freeze your jam instead of canning it, don't fill it past the freeze line on your jars. For the last thing, Bailey used some of the crock pot juice to make pear jello. If you want to see our jello recipe, I'll leave a link to a short above. While it was an exhausting couple of days, we did get so much done and it was super rewarding. Let us know your favorite canned recipes or favorite way to preserve pears down below. And don't forget to like and share this video, subscribe, and we'll see you all soon.